be the ones determining our future, our priorities. So how does the redistricting process work in Wisconsin? I know it's very different on a statewide basis. And I know in Wisconsin, as you referenced, it's not just at the congressional level that this is an issue. It's also at the level of the state legislature. So Mm -hmm. how does that process work and what can be done to ensure that the process results in fairer maps? So the legislature has the first go at creating new maps. So they will draw new maps after the 2020 census. And then the governor needs to approve the maps. He does have veto power over the over the new lines. Hopefully we can reach a consensus there. If we are not able to reach a consensus, it will go into the courts. So what can people do? So It is difficult to talk about process and political process. You know, I think we have seen the way in which it's difficult for folks to organize around, for example, getting money out of politics. You know, money in politics, the impact of Citizens United is felt in every issue area. But it's really difficult to build public support for these process issues rather than for just immigration reform, criminal justice reform, health care. And so I think for a long time, people have not really focused in on gerrymandering in Wisconsin, despite the fact that it is some of the most egregious gerrymandering in the country, you know, despite the fact that our case went to the Supreme Court. If you're a really informed voter, maybe you know about gerrymandering, but it's not really been a top political issue. And I think that's changing. I think the outcome of this election, those vote shares combined with what just happened in the lame duck session is leading folks around the state to really say there's something there's something wrong here. And I think what's hopeful about that is that I think it is actually going to be a political issue in, in elections going forward. And I think it's really important that we not sit around between elections. I think it's really important that folks continue to engage in their communities and have these important conversations and talk about the integrity of our democracy. I did not grow up in this country thinking that democracy was something that I was going to have to fight for, but I feel that way now. And Wisconsin has been the canary in the coal mine for so many things over the course of my lifetime. You know, we saw and felt in Wisconsin the influence of the Koch brothers' money on our elections. We were one of their original testing grounds. We saw anti-worker policies being tested here first. And we're seeing the next iteration of corporate control and influence in our elections being attempted right now. You know, it's important for us here for the issues that we care about in Wisconsin, but it's also critical nationwide that we demonstrate that this kind of rigging of the system is unacceptable and the voters, the people of this state and this country will not stand for it. Hi, this is Jason Zukitz, the host of Have You Heard? The UC3P News Quiz, a podcast where we quiz University of Chicago students on recent entertaining news stories. You can find us on any podcast platform by searching for Have You Heard? UC3P and can find out more about our upcoming live shows at facebook.com slash hyhnewsquiz. Thanks for listening. So I'd also like to hear a little bit about what your legislative priorities are going to be for the upcoming session. I know you mentioned some of your priorities, broadly speaking, being healthcare, transportation, infrastructure, environmental reforms, things of that nature. Are there any specific initiatives in any of those areas or any other areas that you're looking forward to addressing in particular, whether it's through sponsoring legislation or work through committees? What are you specifically looking forward to, to working on? So as I mentioned There's really a renewed political dialogue right now around the idea of a Green New Deal. And this is something that I've been talking about that I campaigned on. Um, It's really important to my district for many reasons. Number one, I'm on Lake Michigan. It is one of our greatest assets. And I think there's a growing awareness in Wisconsin and really for all of the states that surround the Great Lakes that this is an incredible resource that we have not treated as such. 
And we are looking at a global water crisis and how we manage our resources here is is a really, really important question for us to figure out before that crisis hits our doorstep. We also are a state that has been hit really hard by deindustrialization and my community in particular. My dad always liked to tell a story when I was growing up about, you know, he went to Case High School, named after Case Tractor, and folks would graduate or drop out of high school, go down to Case and get a job making a good middle-class wage, be represented by a union, you know, have enough money to go on the occasional vacation and retire, have that really solid middle-class life. That is not the case anymore, right? We know that if you drop out of high school, you are not going to be able to make a good middle-class wage, even if you graduate from high school and don't go on to some further training or education. It's going to be very difficult for you to make it in today's economy. And Wisconsin has a low unemployment rate, but it does not have a good high job, a uh, good jobs rate, <laughs> right? So a lot of people that are working multiple jobs are really struggling to make ends meet. We have a high percentage of, of people who are insecure at the end of the month, not quite able to make it. So I think it's critical that in this moment in which there are changes happening in our economy, we know that it's not just outsourcing, it's also automation. We need to figure out how to create and support good middle class union jobs. Those are the jobs that created the middle class in this country, and those are the jobs we're going to need for people to be able to live full, meaningful, stable lives. So the way I think about it is, what is our jobs plan for this century? And how in that are we recognizing that we need to rapidly decarbonize? You know, we need to be off of fossil fuels within the next few decades. There's huge potential in Wisconsin for us to be part of that economy. We like to say that we make things here. And we can make solar panels, we can make the sensors and controls, we can build public transit systems. So that's really exciting policy for me. It's new policy. There are, of course, states that are doing some great work in this area, but it's not like there's a playbook. And so that is really interesting, really compelling, and I think really important for our state I also have an interesting opportunity and challenge in my district, which is that Foxconn is coming just a few miles from my district. And you and some of the listeners may have heard about this, but a major incentives package was given to Foxconn to come to Wisconsin, and they are making major investments and will be providing thousands of jobs in the area. And, you know, it's been a a very contentious political issue. It was throughout the campaign. I arrived after the vote was taken in the legislature, but would not have voted for that incentives package. I think it was too big. But at this stage, the plant is coming and I, I want them to be successful. I want this to be something that's good for my community. So... That is, as I said, an opportunity and a challenge. And I think one of the ways that that will potentially stress our community is that we do not have a lot of housing available at this stage. And if we have potentially thousands of people moving into our community to work in some of these jobs, I fear real pressure, real rent spikes, and stress on folks that are living uh, close to, as I said, the end of the month or not having a lot of extra money to go around. So we're wanting to work on housing policy, public transit, great work going on in my community around workforce development, uh, local government partnering with labor, partnering with the school district and local tech colleges and universities to try to prepare folks for these new jobs. So all of that is, is exciting and challenging. And I have good relationships with all those folks locally. And so we're working together to come up with a plan that, you know, recognizes our community is changing and we need to do everything we can to make it work for folks locally, a lot of people of color in racing, some areas of the city with really high unemployment rates. How are we getting folks who are struggling to find those good jobs into the jobs that are coming to our community? So it sounds like there are plenty of policy opportunities. There are also a lot of structural political challenges in place, given the fact that the Democrats are still in the minority in the legislature. 
The legislation to limit incoming Governor Evers' power has not yet been signed, but it is expected that Scott Walker will do so. Mm-hmm. How can Governor-elect Evers and the Democratic members of the Assembly make meaningful forward progress on these priorities, given the political environment and sort of the structural disadvantages that you're currently facing? Well, the first test of this will be the budget. So Governor Evers' team will propose a budget this spring. It will come to the Joint Finance Committee and then to the whole body. You know, I am a little nervous, as I mentioned. I think the tone that has been set through the lame duck session is going to make it difficult for us all to work together in a bipartisan way. But the reality of who Tony Evers is, is that Tony is a man who did not run for this job because he is a career politician. He just cares about the people of Wisconsin. He just cares about our school system. And he is someone who's willing to sit down with anybody and try and reach a compromise. And so we're really lucky to have him at the helm. I think that he is going to do a really good job of navigating a uh, split government. And I hope that folks on both sides of the aisle are able to put aside some of these partisan differences and recognize that there are incredibly pressing issues facing the state of Wisconsin that cannot wait two years or four years. As I mentioned, our roads, our public schools, our investments in infrastructure are are critical. And also here, as is true of the whole country, folks are really struggling with access to quality, affordable health care. So there are there are steps that need to be taken there and we don't have we don't have the time to waste. Given that you have politics in your family, but you also have this extensive organizing background, I'm just curious to hear your thoughts about your future and when you look ahead and think about the role that you hope to be playing down the line, whether it's in politics, out of politics, in the assembly, not in the assembly, where do you see yourself going in the future? Great question. You know, it's of course hard to say. Right now, I am still feeling new here. I've been here for a year, but I really have not been here for regular session. And I really like being in the assembly. I think what is so amazing about this job is you both get to talk about and work on these big issues that impact the whole state, but you also get to be close to your district. I live in Racine. I spend a lot of time there. I have the time to meet with folks that want to meet with me. I have the ability to do listening sessions and open open office hours and just chat with folks that I run into in the grocery store. And when you run for higher office, you lose a lot of that. You lose your deep connection to your community, I think. And, you know, I love knocking on doors. That was my favorite part of campaigning. And I knocked on a lot of doors, even though it was a short special election in November and December and had conversations and built relationships through that that have absolutely influenced my work. So I'm really enjoying the assembly right now. I like being part of this team and feel really great about the colleagues that I have here and get to work with. We can specialize, right? We each can kind of take on some different policy areas and and some bills and hopefully support each other to get those things done. There are areas of work that I'm really passionate about that are important to my district that I know other folks in the caucus have deep knowledge they've been working on for a long time and they have great bills that they're ready to roll out this coming session. And I'm excited to support them. You know, some of those are criminal justice reform, driver's licenses for undocumented folks in our state. These are issues that people talk to me about all the time in my district. And I love that I get to have those personal relationships and see those organizing efforts and be at those events and then come here and work with my colleagues on that policy. So I'm loving the assembly for right now, you know. I do also love organizing, and that is something that I, of course, will always keep in my back pocket and be something that I I hope to come back to in different capacities, whether that's through elected office or outside of it. My work in climate was with young people, and I, of course, am a young person, but I also love working with young people and have really tried to make internships in my office meaningful and work that I'm doing in Racine with interns and with other young people around sort of ongoing organizing efforts, opportunities for those folks to grow. 
I was really lucky to have incredible mentorship and opportunities through the climate movement to get a lot of skills that are really useful to my work now. And I want 